morning, everybody. I'm just one of the uh, congregation members, and if you sit on that side, you might not know me because I always sit on that side. And my name is Marike. So uh, Marie just sent me a message at the end of last year while I was busy preparing for Klein School. And he asked me to do the message today because as you can gather with, you know, a little bit disorganized this morning that um, it's still holiday time and both our pastors are on leave. Um, and when I got this message, I just thought, <laughs> never, <laughs> not the morning service. Um, but I was busy preparing on, on um, blessing. And yo, the Lord just put it so heavily on my heart. I have to come and share and come and remind us just today. And it's nothing new, but just come and remind us again. I forget um, easily. So we need to be reminded sometimes. And yeah, and so here I am. <laughs> so I also wanted to start and say who saw somebody today um, for the first time this year and wanted to wish them a, a blessed new year. But then Tim already said, please wish each other a happy new year. Um, so he stole the limelight there. But yeah, this past season, as we uh, went to the shops and everywhere we went, we saw people and uh, meet strangers and everybody would just wish us blessed Christmas, happy new year. Um, and on Facebook, the WhatsApp messages will hear uh, blessed uh, Christmas, happy new year. And um, I remember when I was a child, and many of you will remember that too, that um, we got these Christmas cards sent by family and friends. And my mom used to hang it on our lounge curtains with pegs. And the same message was in those cards mostly. Blessed Christmas, Happy New Year. And um, I was just wondering about what are we actually wishing upon each other? Because so often um, we wish each other these good wishes and reality happens. Life happens and things don't go the way we hoped for or we wished upon each other. And um, there's often nothing we can do to make it right or make it better. And um, we'll see in God's uh, word when we do the first reading, God's original attention for us was also good when he blessed Adam and Eve and told them to be fruitful and multiply. But sin happened and things didn't change uh, out the way he intended it. Um, but God, unlike us, he could do something about it and he did something about it. So in our second reading, to make things right, we'll read about a promise that he gave to Abraham. Morning, morning. I'm reading from Genesis 1, verse 27 to 28, as our first reading uh, from the NIV. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Second reading is from Acts 3, verse 25. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. That's my son, my youngest son. <laughs> okay. So it's along these lines of the scriptures that we want to look at blessing today. And I invited two guests, and they're very good friends because we're sharing the same beads. This is Mrs. A. Just a little illustration, and this is Mrs. B. So they are friends, and they are colleagues. And they're the same age, plus minus. They are both married, and... Um, they both have two kids, and Mrs. A gave her life to the Lord when she was 16. Mrs. B gave her life to the Lord when she was 18, and they both attend church regularly. When the clock struck 12 on Old Year's Eve, they both wished each other and friends and family, Happy New Year, um, and this was all happening at the bra they attended. Maybe you can identify. Um, and then early morning on the 1st of Jan, they all got these messages on WhatsApp, on the groups, and the little pictures, and Happy New Year, and all that. Um, and then the year started. They both went to work on the 2nd of January. Mrs. A was called in by her boss and told that the company is restructuring, and um, she was promoted. Mrs. B, 
at the same company, was also called in by the boss and told about the restructuring. And she was retrenched. As it is, Mrs. A's husband has got a good job. Her kids are clever, they're healthy. It's all good. Mrs. B's marriage is struggling. Their finances aren't good. She's got a mentally challenged child. Her son um, is bullied at school, and the list goes on. Who of the two is blessed? Is it not that we reckon that Mrs. A is the blessed one? And why would we think that? Is it not that, not that our measurement of someone being blessed and our, standing, our understanding of what is being blessed um, is based on what I call wealth, health, and prosperity? Um, and it's great if it indeed does go well. And yo, our Heavenly Father gives us so many good blessings and good gifts so often. But what of our li- if our lives had more of Mrs. B? What if things weren't that great? If trials and difficulties were part of our life every day? Um, and many have those lives. I mentioned I was preparing for Klein School. And um, many of you know, but if you're visiting or are here for the first time today, our church have an outreach to an area on the northern um, side of PE called Klein School. And uh, we have a soup kitchen there. We have a creche that started last year. Um, Arona, the lady was leading here just now, she started the creche there, or as they call it, the creche. And and then we have a a weekly Bible study uh, for the men led by Peter. Um, And then I'm involved with a women's Bible study every Tuesday. And many of those women um, that I deal with have lost one or more child to gangsters. There's a lot of alcoholism which caused these grandmothers to have to take care of their grandchildren and often also the, the alcoholic children on that little pension they've got. Um, and many of the people, they are jobless. And it's a polluted area. Um, and when it's a windy, typical windy day like PE often have, it's just these dust clouds going past. Um, so it's not a pleasant environment. It's not great. And I wonder when they get uh, wished this Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, how they experience it in their environment. Um, but they cannot do much, or often not much, uh, to change their circumstances. But God has not forgiven them, uh, for, forgotten them, and God has not forgotten us either. So he made this promise to Abram, as we read um, the last reading, and I just want to read it also in the um, Amplified. You are the sons of the prophets and heirs to the covenant which God made with your father, saying to Abram, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It was for you first of all that God raised up his servant and son Jesus and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. So he made this promise early in Genesis to all the nations. Um, it says there to the families, but in some translations it says to all the families, after all the nations. Um, and this was given even before the law of Moses was given. And God keeps his promises always. And we see in the scripture that God promised to Abraham that through his lineage, all nations will be blessed. So if we can just get the next slide. So Abram became the father of Israel, the chosen nation. And then Judah, um, one of the, out of one of the tribes of Israel, the chosen nation, became, uh, um, Jesus was born, our savior, for all the nations. So um, before, it was only the chosen nation who through the priests had access to God. Um, by them making sacrifices on behalf of their sins. And it was only them that had this privilege. No other nation had access to God in this way. And then God blessed all nations through Jesus because he became the sacrifice so that we, us, the Gentiles, we can now also have forgiveness of those things that make this um, separation between us and God, that the separation that we call sins, all these things we do that, that sort of blocks our communication with God. And we can all have access to God, not only the Israelites. Yo, and I just think, what a blessing. We don't have to go somewhere and go to the uh, tent and, or to the um, ark and, and there somebody's got to do it on our behalf. We can just go and wherever we are, Um, just whenever, just talk to this God of ours through Jesus, who was the sacrifice for us. So in Galatians 3, verse 26 to 29, Paul confirms this. So he says, So in Christ Jesus, 
You are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we are all heirs according to the promise if we have Christ in us. So the first um, sort of heading that I've got is Jesus the blessing. So Jesus was this promise given to us so that we can now have access. So in our daily lives, why would Jesus be the blessing? Um, could we say to each other in the middle of December, for instance, I wish you a Jesus Christmas and a Jesus New Year. Or could we say on our birthdays, congratulations, have a wonderful Jesus year. How does that sound? Strange. Sounds a bit strange. But um, how would our lives look like if we did just that? If we understood and we could live the blessing we were given in the person of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote a lot about it because he understood it. He understood that the blessing of having Christ in him to the, under, the extent that he just wanted nothing more. Um, he understood it meant he could now have real joy, peace, love, and all of this into eternity. Um, not just temporary wealth, health, and prosperity. And he was an important man in the Jewish circles, well-educated, but he discarded everything, um, any status, or any wealth, or in, even any comfort. Um, and this all happened after he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, after changing his life over to Jesus. So Paul felt so strongly about it, uh, and about glorifying God, that he, uh, instead of looking at his own needs or his own comforts, he says in Philippians 1, 1 verse 21, and we're not putting it up because it's so short, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Yo, to make that statement, that's huge. Um, but Paul also understood that having Christ in us means we are changed people. So he states in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, also a well-known verse, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined into him by faith in him as a savior, is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Um, yeah, we, we think differently, we operate differently when we've got Christ in us, this promised gift to us. Um, so we do not become perfect, but if we have Christ in us, through, through the Holy Spirit, there's a change. We want to love more. We want to do what is right more often. We want to spend more time with God. We are more content with our circumstances. We understand that despite our prayers and our supplication to God, things don't always work the way we want it. We worry less because we learn to trust God and His promises. And when things go really bad, we hold on to Him and still have His joy and His peace. When we look at Jesus as our ultimate source of joy, peace, and love, the blessings or the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 also starts making more sense. And um, the Amplified explains those blessings nicely. It says it means to be happy, to be envied, and spiritually prosperous. That's with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of the outward conditions. Um, regardless of the outward conditions. So when Jesus uh, spoke about these blessings on, on the mountain, um, he lists those who are blessed with this type of blessing. And he said it's those who are poor in spirit, in other words, the humble, those who mourn over their sins, the meek, those who thirst for righteousness, just not seek it, but thirst for righteousness, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for the sake of the kingdom. And these are all spiritual blessings. None of them refer to our worldly health, wealth, or prosperity. And it's not always easy, but we've got the Holy Spirit to help us with this. Amazing. This gift of Jesus through the Holy Spirit in us. Ew. So I um, just wanted to, uh, to share a, an example of a lady who understood a little bit 
of, or maybe not just a little bit, because um, she understood that if you've got Christ in you, you've got to die to yourself and then just be obedient to him and do what he tells you to do. So this was once when at Lane School when we were sharing about God's love and she um, shared, she was 85 years old at the time and she's since passed away. But her example, yo, I will never forget it. Um, she said when they were living on the farm, they were farm workers and her husband had an affair with another woman on the farm and eventually had two children with this woman. Now this Klein School woman, this lady, she went to that woman with a gift to show her the love of Christ. And I just thought, wow. Yo, imagine that. Going to the woman your husband has an affair with and bring her a gift of love. That's next level. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And what would, um, is, is, that, is that kind of what the blessing of Christ in us looks like? I just thought, wow. <laughs> um, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, and, 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 my, and, yeah, and her outcome was positive. It's not always the case when we show the love of Christ that we have a positive outcome. But in her case, those children, um, after their mother passed away, they loved her like their own mother and actually in the end fought to have her stay with them. So, um, yeah, God's grace was, was big on her. And in my own life, I also struggled a lot with fear. And I don't know, maybe some of you can identify with that, um, especially when my children were younger. Yo, I had a lot of fear about them. And, um, yeah, because of Jesus... I'm also an heir to the promise we've read about and we've heard about, and I have access to God and His promises. Um, so He changed my life at a conference many years ago, um, confirming 1 Peter 5 verse 7 three times to me during that conference and just shortly afterwards. And in short, it's a well-known verse. It says, cast your worries on Him. He will take care. And I could hold on to that. So there are specific occurrences in my life that I look back to and um, when, when I do get discouraged or when I want to get fearful again, I remember these. And um, the first one was uh, when we were in the process of moving from Durban to PE. Kubis, my husband, was here already, and I was still in Durban. And our oldest son, he um, was a first year in Stellenbosch then, just left home. And two, three weeks into his first year studies there at Stellenbosch, he got pneumonia. And I was going to fly down on the Friday for a wedding, a family wedding we had, on Tuesday evening, I got the call from him in the hospital bed. There weren't WhatsApps and stuff at the time. Um, so he called me and he said, Mama, can you ask me? Now, I'm a mother, and if you're a mother, you'll understand. If you're a mother and you're with your child, things are better. And things goes better. And there I'm in Durban. He's down in Stellenbosch, and I can do nothing. I went onto the internet quickly to see if I can get an earlier flight. And for some strange reason, there were no flights that I could take. Um, to go there earlier. And um, all I could do was just pray and pray and pray and wrestled with God until I had God's peace in the knowledge to know that God will take care of him. No matter the outcome, God will take care of him. And it was tough. It was hard for him too. <laughs> but yeah, um, he's alive and well and he's here this morning. <laughs> so we're grateful. Um, yeah, and then a year later, um, our daughter started um, having a, what we, I don't know if it's a mental illness, but a mental uh, disability or a disorder, what um, is called um, compulsive obsessive disorder, and some people have it with, with ways they do, but she had it of her thoughts, um, and some of the young people know her, so they know the story, um, but yeah, it's these thoughts that go into her mind, and this caused her to become very depressed. So she was down in Cape Town, and I was in PE, and... Um, when somebody's depressed, you worry about them and you can't get hold of them. So I often oh, try to phone her, try to get hold of her, and I couldn't get hold of her. And then again, what do you do? You sit here, they, she's there. And yeah, I just had to pray and pray and wrestle, really wrestle with God. And every time, as soon as I got the peace of the Lord, then she'd let me know she's okay. But it's almost as if God first wanted me to, to first know that He will take care. I can't do anything. He will take care. Because I can take him on his promises. Now, this um, OCD is, is much better now. It took a lot of years for her to, to actually heal a bit. But this was her journey with God. God wanted to put so much into her. And it's almost over, but there's still a little bit of it left every now and then. But throughout this whole journey, um, we, we just experienced that God is faithful. And his peace never failed us. Not for me and not for her. So I'm just wondering, where are you today? Um, what's going on in your life? And 
um, what could perhaps happen if you were wished a Jesus 2019? Yeah, that's just the question. So the, the second point I want to go on to is just uh, maybe a difficult one, and it's difficult for me. Um, share the blessing. We've now received this blessing, um, and we mentioned the promise to Abraham is available to all nations. But does everyone know about this blessing? And, and how willing are we to share this blessing, blessing with others? Or how concerned are we about others who do not know about this blessing? Or who have not met Jesus? How concerned are we about them? Um, the Jesus, the blessing himself, said before his ascension, he said, we must witness of him, not only um, in our own environment, but to the ends of the earth. So 2019, will, be, will it be a Jesus year um, where we will not just be concerned of our own congregation, of our own families, not just concerned of our own walk with him, our own joy, our own peace, our own salvation, but will we perhaps also be concerned about those who do not yet have this amazing blessing, of those who do not yet know Jesus? And his Holy Spirit will help us, um, difficult as it is, I know. Um, I struggle with it often, but I know he's given us this blessing. He doesn't leave us alone, the comforter. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to help us with this. And then just a the last thought. Displace God's blessing. Maybe wishing upon each other a happy new year could somehow resemble a little bit of Adam and Eve in us. Um, us wanting to become our own gods. Um, if uh, things start going really well for us, if all our needs are met, our finances are amazing, we are healthy, our kids are just doing so great at school or in life, we might become self-sufficient or maybe proud or maybe self-righteous and uh, maybe eventually, and it often happens gradually, discarding this blessing, um, discarding Jesus out of our lives, this promise that God gave us. When all is going so well with us, do we still need this blessing? Do we still need Jesus? And perhaps displacing God's blessing in our efforts to gain the worldly blessings. Mrs. A had it all going for her. Mrs. B had many difficulties. And we can perhaps identify with one of them. I can for sure. Um, but which one of them is blessed? Both. Because if we look at the promise given to Abraham, there's no requirement and there are no circumstances. It simply states that all the nations will be blessed through him. The blessing is already given. Jesus has fulfilled this blessing and this promise. And, but we have a choice. And it depends on how we define blessing in our minds. So is it the wishful thinking, as the world defines, blessing in terms of wealth, health, and prosperity? Or do we accept, or accept that we have been blessed and want to live 2019 as a Jesus year, a year with Christ in us, a year with changed people, doing things differently, blessing others with Jesus, and not being self-righteous and just thinking it's us who do everything. And it's everyone's own choice. So if you want to make this choice for him for the first time today, or if you just want to do it by renewal, after the service we will have somebody um, to pray with you. But yeah, Let's think about it. When we wish each other, what do we wish each other when we say, Blessed New Year. Amen. So let's just... Let's just close our eyes and I'll just pray for us. Lord, we cannot thank you enough for this amazing blessing that we can have you in us through your spirit. That you didn't just leave us and just kept to a nation, um, the Israelites, and left us Gentiles all on our own. We want to praise you this morning that you sent Jesus so that we can now be here in this church and just talk to you. Anyone, everyone, anytime. We want to praise your name for the change you bring in us, for your spirit, for your promises. And even though we might have difficulties, we might not be healthy, 
we might struggle in so many areas, Lord, we thank you that we can hold on to you and know that you are faithful, that you will carry us through, and that you are there eternally, and that we have that hope to hold on to. We praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.